Well, welcome traders, investors, punters and dribblers to another Traders Community Podcast. And a wild day today was the biggest fall in NASDAQ futures for quite a while, uh, going back to 2020, mainly because uh, Meta platforms formerly known as Facebook uh, kind of lost its way to the metaverse and lost over a quarter of its value um, after its uh, earnings report. Last night was pretty dismal. They've been hurt by Apple, uh, as we spoke yesterday, and many other things, uh, change TikTok preferences, uh, all these sort of things, just a general malaise about Facebook. Um and so that was the bear. Remember yesterday was a bullish day uh, and it pretty well went to plan. It went into that day as we spoke about yesterday. We'll look, go over the charts where it did the replication of December. So it gave us a really, we had a really nice day, day obviously going in short overnight and we've all those puts and that we had. Um, then after the, all of the trepidation was there all about Amazon, I think they were down about 7% into the close or at the close and they came out and beat handedly with a much larger EPS um, and revenue etc um, and they're, they're what I've heard of their uh, conference call was much more positive than what we've seen lately so the other th- stock after hours was snap which also handily beat that was got crash crushed by about 20 percent uh during the market uh that all those social media stocks sold off with facebook as you can imagine um and then they were up last time i looked about ten dollars after earnings um so we it was a real day of uh, of volatility for both bulls and bears Uh, the other volatility also came into bond in the currency markets we had uh, the ecb with lagarde uh not right off the fact that they're going to, they could have a uh, rise in rates. They left them unchanged today, uh, if needed. Over in England, the Bank of England raised their rates by a quarter of a, a percent, um, but that was a 5-4 majority. Those four banksters in their minority wanted actually to push for a 50 basis point rise. So... And then we flow back over here, and the volatility, uh, people ask me, oh, natural gas, natural gas is easy, or this, we all know. Well, they don't, and if they've said that, they've never traded it. Um, that was up massively yesterday and down massively today. Remember, as I said, it, it, it is known as the most volatile commodity, and it has a lot of volatile elements in it. Um, we had the report out today, EIA, but it's much to do with weather. Um, lately, it's also a factor what's going on in the Ukraine, uh, but typically it's it's uh, demand, supply, weather, uh, and of course LNG. Uh, crude went up, hit another seven-year high, over ninety dollars, and that was a lot to do with the war drums just keep banging out of the United States over Russia and the Ukraine. This time it was Nancy Pelosi. Um, out with it and of course there's a lot of speculation is she long oil or thereabouts the the crazy thing with all this a it makes energy so much more expensive to everyone around the world Um, secondly it helps out russia russia you know if that's your enemy um but and so i stand by my theory that this is a massive uh, distraction, wag the dog for the shocking energy companies. Uh, sorry, energy uh, policies. Sorry about that, energy companies. Because, um, of course, you can blame Russia for it all, right? You can't blame the policies. So, we've got um, that going on uh, as far as an overview. So, let's let's get on with it and start with the chart, shall we? So, quick little overview of what's happened after hours, and these are just five-minute charts, the main things we look at. We flip between the Russell, as you know, and the uh, NASDAQ in the future. So, we'll look at the S&P first. So, right at the close, it closed down near its lows. It had a little bit of a run into it. Then Amazon dropped 
uh, their earnings and we bounced here from uh, the low, I think it was about here, the close. But anyway, the low got down to 44.62. We're now trading at 45.23, so 60 handles higher. Um, this actually recalced on the 08s. This was a minus 28 just prior. So we did bounce uh, all the way back to that uh, breakdown here. If you look across, 45.22, and that's where we rest right now. Um, and you can see... It accelerated with this little kiss of life here on the five minute. If we look at uh, the Russell, much the same, right? Uh, there we go. Bring that in for you. Much the same move there as you'd expect. And Nasdaq's the more dramatic one. We'll look at that. Crude, you can see, just went up all day today. Yesterday it had its OPEC meeting and the EIA reports were out. Uh, the status quo... You can see it was pretty well dawdling around and finally it broke up. This impetus, the machines grabbed hold of that statement. Uh, Pelosi is the Speaker of the House. Some say she kind of runs the show with Biden and all that. But whatever. Uh, very, very warmongering government, this one, and distraction. So that is up, 9021 right now. Natural gas. So if you call yesterday... It attacked the uh, 550. It sold off um, about 50 cents today. Uh, so we're back just under five. So this thing moves. These are 10% moves. They're big points. Not advisable to trade it if you're not a seasoned trader. Uh, on, and I mean on an, as a natural gas trader. Um, people love, the you know, particularly the punters and dribblers. Oh. Everything's easy. It's not easy. You've seen that violent moves in uh, just a few days. So um, let's move on with a closer look here at what we got. So here's the S&P. Uh, and we're looking at a mixture of cash and futures here, as I said yesterday. So weekly, we spat, if you recall, back through the Cajun here. And that's where we're resting right now. So we just saw that was a little breakdown level. So you can see how all this mathematics actually works. The mass in these situations. If we go to the daily. Look what it did. It crossed down. Remember. Uh, the, um, the the tankin. So through the Cajun right there. And then we broke up through after hours. You can see that back up again, okay? Um, so if we look at this, if we were to go across here, so we bounced here at uh, 44.28, and that was the break. We got all, to the, almost to the cloud. Now if I put the futures up, this is actually did get to the cloud. So um, keep an eye on both of them. Some of them do me different with inputs and stuff like that, and time. Cash obviously is different. Because it becomes a mirror image when the US stock market's actually closed. So they're kind of working off each other there. So keep that in mind. Um, and down here on the cash versus futures, this is what I wanted to show. You see how they're just slightly different. You can see on the grid, uh, they're actually pretty tied up today. But we did go more on the futures versus the cash. So it's not a bad thing to look at that. Um, in fact, it's a good thing to look at divergence going on between cash and futures, particularly when it came exhausted. So when that became exhausted. Now, obviously, this is because of Amazon, but it did bounce a little bit here, um, just as far as that goes. Uh, ourselves, we were, were flat uh, futures and everything when the Amazon uh, came out. All we kept was a little few IWM puts, um, which we quickly got out of after that number drop. So let's look at this moving forward. Um, stick to your grid. Like I said, here's your breakup point. We get over that on the top side. We get back into this area, right? So 4609. And if we look over here, look what that is, right? So that would be this, a retest of this. This is a perfect, re I mean, that was just a classic short yesterday. It's all fortunate. Um, the downside is, this. we're looking at a very short-term chart here because we know the long-term. 
Uh, uh, down, so a break here. So just keep an eye on the tank and see how they expanded there. And so we got four eights. You got your Cajun uh, as your support. And the top of this is a five eight. So you want to move this to a higher time frame. So let's look at a, a 60 minutes. So the important thing I hope you're learning from or hope we're sh showing is we have a strategy and we go top down, right? Uh, we're not just punning and reflecting. There's nothing that drives me nuts, more nut than nuts, and I don't need to be any more nuts, let's <laughs> be honest, is when um, these people just chop and change all the time, particularly on the Twitters and that. Just be careful of that stuff, folks. And in rooms... And they're always, they never lose money, right? But they're always show short term. Now, the shorter term you are, the more trades you do, the more you lose your game plan, and you can easily get destructed. Now, look, if you're just a pure scalper, then that's all good. That's, that's all I'm talking about. Or if you're some automated system, I know there's a lot on uh, that try to flog their services. That's a different game as well. Well, we're talking about what we do, right? Um, so we're a mixture of investing and trading. We don't invest when it's not the time to do it. You take risk off the table, all this sort of thing. The markets, and you become, you've noticed, trade a very limited uh, series of markets, but keep an eye on them all. Because you can't be a master of everything. Um, plenty claim to be, of course. In this game, every market is different. Different personalities um, and the like. Sorry, just one sec. We've actually got a freeze going on here in. Uh, um, so it's actually 30 degrees here in, in uh, H Town at 5.30. So a lot of us, we, we had that great freeze uh, last year. So um, that's going on. Anyway. So, sorry to digress. So there we have that uh, level I was talking about yesterday, right? So we had, remember, if we just go back, so we go top down. So this is our daily uh, top. Remember where that was on the other one? We broke that down, and it was kind of easy because Facebook missed, and the market didn't get hold of it till later. You had plenty of time on this. Obviously not on options because that market was closed, and if you notice, we did that during... Uh, just before the close, and you also buy out of the money options to limit your premium loss if you if if that actually goes up. So all those things you take into account. Look what we're testing right now. So we're testing this cage and right here, and at the cloud, and it's two eighths, but that's two eighths off one eighth. So it's not really a big deal, right? But look where we go across here. You can see it, it's a little head and shoulderish kind of pattern. But we're just measuring, rebalancing. That's what also we use the cheek out for. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we've got Madavi here. We're going to move on to the NASDAQ. And we'll find our little NASDAQ. Where we got the NASDAQ hiding? So many, so still getting used to this, as you know, as you can see. But uh, here we go. Let, here's the NASDAQ 100. Sorry, let one sec again. So here's the NASDAQ. Um, you there, my darling? Yeah, right here. Sorry, it's, uh, I keep getting texts over the weather. School's out tomorrow, so it's going to be a bloody nightmare. Dogs, kids, <laughs> freezing weather. Uh, anyway, so here we are. And so we pretty well had the same view short, as you know, from yesterday. And I'll leave uh, you and Madhavi here. The weather. Go uh, ahead, Madhavi. Yeah, um, well, today was like, you know, it looked like we were going to sell off like I thought we would. You know, we yesterday we, we talked about how we recovered all the way up. Um, to where we started sell off, um, we sold down. You know, uh, a lot of people were thinking today that Amazon was going to be the one that breaks the markets back, 
and Amazon came in, I guess, reported a little bit better. That's up. So that's going to give a little relief to the market, I think. And um, Snaps came out, and they're all excited. It made it's making a little bit of money now or something, and they they jumped that stock up. Uh, I don't I don't understand that either. We got you know, both those in the window here too. You can see uh, these are five minute charts, but you can see the Amazon and the Snap there. Could yeah, be... well, I mean, Snaps would not have lifted this market. Like uh, you know, if it was Snap only. It would not. You would not even see them bleep on that. No, no, on, no. On the S and P's or nothing. That's not or or the NQ. You know, that's too too small of a company. You know, even though now it's big, a lot bigger than Twitter. <laughs> it's not hard, is it? <laughs> Ever looking for a date? You could go on Snaps. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what it is for now, now, now. Uh, no, no, no. It's still family time right here at five thirty. Um, <laughs> I've been talking with single people. I heard he's got a good dating system. <laughs> <laughs> Just a rumor? Just a rumor? Or... Yeah, rumor here. <laughs> well, so that was down 20%, I think, today. So it's, yeah, well. Yeah, it beat it down. You know, I did some options. I think tomorrow I'm going to pay a heavy price for it. I did some um, put, uh, on calls. I sold the calls and I bought some calls, but I did it as a bearish one. And, you know, I should have known better. I should have done the puts instead. But, I don't know. I should have yeah, when something's down there. that much. The vol is pretty pretty high. Uh, I didn't really look at it. I, I tend to not... Um, sometimes, like, even... I, I tend to not sell vol on earnings unless I really... Not on tech companies. Uh, and, well, and I think... Facebook reminded me of that risk yesterday. If I had it, I didn't, you know, what did it fall? 26%, but it gapped down 50, 60 bucks, well, didn't it? I was going to do the 23 puts, and I was like, man, this thing's falling out. Then at the end, it started going down to like 24. Oh, I, I remember like, that, that, yeah. That's, that's kind of close now. But I was like, man, this thing's so beat up. If it even has bad earnings, I don't think it's going to go down that much, you know? But I thought it was going to go for a range between um 24 to 27 bucks somewhere around there what it close at it looks like 24 or something it's trading is at like 40 yeah it's trading at 38 40 right now uh, yeah. so yeah and that got if you look at a murray it did a whole grid you don't see that very often punters oh eight to minus one eight so i mean because bear in mind this opened up because um it had fallen down so much so that's quite the move. So two things is going to happen with this company. It's either going to be the new new darling of the street, which I highly doubt it because it really doesn't have really great earnings. It's not a great cash flow. First time it was like. Does it have? Well, how does it get its revenue? Do they have ads or anything? What's the? I don't know much about them other than uh, it's good during a riot. Well, they're they're able to make their quarters. I guess they have making money every quarter for like a year now, but like very small. And what what else do they do? But this this quarter they finally churned it where I, there was actually a, they're self efficient. They called it. So they don't have to sell their billions of shares every month like the CEO does. Every, you know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I mean, but mark my words, this this company. Um, the only thing it did, it just made a better area for people who are going to short it. They're going to. When, when things start selling off again, they're not going to be looking favorably at these companies. Uh, they're, they're nowhere. They're no class of Microsoft or Apple's. Well, so this one snapped back. I had to say that I snapped back after getting destroyed with um, that little Mark Zuckerberg uh, destruction in his little metaverse. Um, he, oh, you, you know, know he hit reality yeah. today. That's our topic today. <laughs> yeah. Mark Zuckerberg is a, is a different, uh, I guess, platform to say with a re reality, but I think it doesn't have as good as a dating app as Snap stuff. <laughs> well, that's for another topic. We might have a have to have uh, one day a whole uh, thirty minutes. We, people might have to sign up for that one. Uh, how to use Snapchat in riots and dating? That's what it's most known for, of course. Uh, and so Amazon. Uh, if we look at that just above it, so that, look at why that jumped. Let me just move the numbers across for you. 
So that jumped from 2734 to 3280. So just think of that in how big Amazon is. That's 500 green bucks, green ones right there. That is a big move when you consider how many shares there are, right? So what is that move in market cap? Um, incredible move. And it went uh, not as dramatic as far as a Murray Math move, but we went from oversold. You see, it was already oversold. It was down at minus one eight. So you had a reason to buy it. And it went up six eight. So it went seven eights on that five minute. And these are just bad ticks. So it just looks like it gapped up uh, to 32.50 or something, pulled back 120 bucks, and then went to new highs, or not new highs, but up here. Um, and if you look at our weekly charts, we do on these uh, every week in that weekly, you'll see where we rest on that. That was off a big double top. We're just coming back up to that neckline, uh, or break line, I should say. So if we go back on to Spurs and Nas, you can see both of them exploded. With uh, AMZ, a AMZN, Amazon, AMZN. So it looks. So if you can see what happened, we were uh, when as low as fourteen four fourteen thousand four hundred fifty one. We closed just off those lows, and then on Amazon we exploded. And but you could get this. This wasn't hard to get, by the way. This is a pretty liquid move. It come up about here. But we went from, uh, what did I just say, 14.457 to 14.8. So we had a uh, four, nearly a 400 handle move. On the S&P, 14.72 is roughly where it was. So we had a good 50 handles on the spurs as well. So here's the thing, don't get too excited because we have a jobs number out in the morning. Now, looking at that, we know that the ADP number was an absolute shocker. 300,000 job loss, so expecting $200,000 job gain. But the big thing isn't that. The big thing is going to be what the earnings are. So, look, let's be honest. People should get paid more, uh, particularly when the minimum wage is it's nothing if you actually work and you deliver and you produce. And we saw the production was way up with the uh, labour costs, Numbers are out today for the Q4. Um, so they're, you know, a month behind this one. Um, and I think it was like 6.7, the actual cost, 6.7. So it's a big number that we're expecting. So sometimes if it's not unexpected, and you can't be like that. So the Bank of England had theirs today. Uh, they raised rates, as I said at the top of the podcast. But one of the comments was they didn't want wages to go up. So imagine if you're a poor old commoner in England hearing that stuff. They can't say that here. But the wages are so low in America for minimum. So, but we have such high inflation. So people are entitled to that. Or we'll see how that pushes across. Um, I know the Wall Street types don't like that. But anyway, that's what they're going to be watching tomorrow. The expectations are there. You don't want that to be too you know, too high because what we've also had, today yields went back up again, right? Because of what happened in Europe with England and the ECB. And we saw the pound and the euro go to, uh, I think it was like two month highs today. Anyway, decent, uh, the dollar came off on that because of the, the yield spread, right? The forward margins. So tomorrow... in. But what that said is, if you go up to today, there's been a lot of profit taking or reversing of positions on those bonds. So you want to watch that reaction. You want to watch the currency boys' reaction. The the, the the dribblers are in the stocks. They're not in those, right? So watch where they are first, um, and that'll give you an idea. Um, I think that covers all that. So... Um, what didn't we look we so we need to move on to the Russell. So Russell was hard to make money today, uh, and Madavi remembered me uh, why, reminded me why. That's not good. Remembered me, reminded me why because it's the most beaten up, as you can see. And yep. and I mean we made a little bit of cashish. We basically had puts on it, as you remember from yesterday. Um, 
but they're out of the money, and so when out of the money is not moving, you don't make too much. You, we made decent, shouldn't complain. But it's, it's a direct opposite to what Spurs and NASDAQ did. Well, not direct, it did actually fall. So if you look at the daily, I mean, this is really what they used to call a turd, right? Um, broke through all this. We haven't looked back. We've got this messy... Uh, let me get this pattern, like, so you got five, five down here, which makes out a one, two, and a three, your bullish case would this be, is a C, or perhaps even a, a longer bull, bull, that would be an A, but it's not reacting with any impulse, either way, I mentioned it wasn't good to make uh, from the short, you did have this, but it's not a big move, right? if you could look at what the others did. Um, and if you go to weekly, it's the one positive thing is it did go right to the bottom of the cloud and you do have that green spug. So th there is a chance that this is... Uh, there is a chance that this, this is a uh, more bullish formation. Because of that, right? The lower the cloud, uh, the green means offers are being taken... Um, and we're doing this work around the old 8.8s, eight so plus 2.8s. And here, that double bottom is also over here. If we look at the uh, hour, this is today. This is what I'm talking about. Look at that, Madhavi, mate. Buddy, hardly yeah. anything. Um, the futures were great. Uh, yeah, so this was a good example where the futures were the right place to be, which is where you were. Whereas I bought those puts for down here. So I, I still... I mean, what did we buy them for? 17, we sold them for like 33 and 28. So that is a double, most of it, right? And the 28, we waited after. But they're so far away. The equivalent in the... I'll put it this way. The equivalent in the spoos were 42 and they went to 201 today. So obviously we did pretty good on that. Um, but this didn't. So futures, you got all that move, right? So, whereas options, you know, we didn't. So, you know, that's the other thing, is sometimes picking the right instrument. My brain was thinking, okay, this will get wrecked more because it's full of crap, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it didn't because everyone already realised it was full of trash. Um, no offence if you're a uh, Russell fan. And th that's it on the five minute. Um Okay, this is our little baby here, nat uh, natural gas. So, natural gas is known, as I said, as the most volatile commodity. It's also points so high, it can move on nothing. Um, it, it moves not just... So, here's the misconception that people that aren't from it, and, and as I've said, dribblers, don't go near this one... Um, by the time it's in it, it's nearly the end of the course. But a lot of it is optionality, meaning when it's tight and when it's too tight, the range, there's a lot of options sold and that often can get big things moving. The other one is when it's really high vol, right? So there's a lot of option selling going on, but you've got to manage the delta. So yesterday I mentioned the commercials were sh pretty short on this thing around 550 and they obviously maintain control went under five bucks uh, the weather models are pointed um, to very very cold weather so you got that but any little tweak out the out in those models and they're different models right one showing it not as cold so remember there's like a couple of models you're watching and then you got what's going on over in the Ukraine and Europe right and all the other centers over there so all those factors. So that's why we use technicals. So we know that yesterday, uh, if you look, take another punt at our daily chart, we just did a nice double top, which is a replication on the weekly chart of that big double bottom that's on the website that goes back to like 2014. Things replicate. Things are predictable, right? Uh, and all these things, um, and you got the height of the, the thing. So we had that nice pullback there. We have the perfect wave wave count. So remember what this is, 
is either correcting this on your weekly or we are going, this is either a three or a five, right? We're either correcting this whole move here, which means we go back down again, or this is the correction, either, i.e. the way four. So we respect our levels. And look what we came back to right back here. Just the cage and a little bit under it, but sitting there on the four hour, uh, you can see it even clearer there. But again, these are off mathematical levels. Um, and then under five minute. So it is it is pretty cold. We actually have the heater on in February. You don't see that very often, mate, do you, in California or Texas? Well, not the parts we live in. Yeah, the AC on. I don't know about you. Yeah, yeah, now you're showing well, off. I live in yeah. those places, man. <laughs> I know. I live in these cold, barren, yeah. snowing countries. Well, Nick, walking dead looking places. <laughs> so let's look at our other little favorite. Where did I put it? The old oil. So, oil, this is what's incredible, but not unusual. If you're from the oil world, if you trade it, you know that the bit... So, there's an old saying in oil. What makes oil go up is oil going up. So, what's hap changed in oil, as we know, it got politicised. It's been politicised for a while, but it's been uh, changed... Now, with the whole ECG movement, which is all wonderful, I think we all agree, you don't have pollution, you save the planet, and all that, but you got to be kind of realistic and factual. Thank God Zuckerberg isn't in charge, hey? and have oil in the metaverse. But, in other words, you got to transition. We also, and so, and there was shame put on everyone, as we know, the bankers, all this stuff have gone on ad nauseum. End of the story is, there isn't the oil. There isn't a new production coming on. It is a natural resource. So you've got to keep producing, exploring, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, then throw on top of that geo geopolitical, and we've been through that many times, the way uh, the energy sec section basically laughed at Texas and all this, no pipelines, all this stuff when they came in, tried to ban drilling, goes on and on. We also, a couple of weeks ago, we had the permits for the uh, Gulf of Mexico Mexico uh, shut down because of climate uh, change, I think was the what the judge said there. And so you've got all these, these movements. Now, we got freezing weather. The economy's opening back up, right? And the other thing, you've, you've got uh, one of your biggest oil producers is Iran. They're off the table. Your other, you got a, a Russia where you're trying to shut down. So just imagine this: if the sanctions actually work with Russia, so you got all of Russia and, and Iran off. Then you've got what's going on with um, uh, the whole ESG thing in the US and, and, and other countries, other producers. And you still got to have all your main, uh, maintenance. You still, you've got the tribal stuff going on in Libya. I mean, that's why this is up here. I mean, it's just shocking to me that people in power were so negligent, and that's what they are. It's a very important resource, right? Oil and gas, the two we're looking at. So all that explains the fundamentals of it, you know. you got to learn to live without it, mate. Huh? It's just to make sure people learn how to live without it right now. <laughs> well, the trouble is they don't because it's the wrong time of the year. Well, what did they say? Move to a warm area or learn to deal with it? <laughs> <laughs> warm or cold, you got to, it depends what time of the year it is. But all jokes aside, that's why we're up here. So I'm just giving an overview of that. Um, technically, we know what it's doing. Uh, that this high is either a five of some degree or a three. We labeled this actually as a three. Where's our weekly over here? We labeled this as a three. This is a four. And we're up in our fifth wave, right? That's your bullish count. I mean, sorry, your bearish count. Your bullish count is that this is just one, two of something much bigger, which is scary, right? Because if, if this is a one, not a three, this gets... Remember, three is typically the longest wave. So the reason I gave you all that overview is you want to understand what the crowd's saying, right? And so you know my theory on the whole Ukraine, wag the dog, energy. This is why, because 
politicians won't take responsibility. If you're American and you haven't worked that out between Trump and Biden, well, <laughs> there's two blokes that never are wrong, right? <laughs> Um, uh, anyway, but it does affect this. And you can see on the four hour what a powerful move. So don't forget a lot of people would have flattened out, a lot of traders. Um, not so much the big ones, but on, X, um, on uh, what do you call it, uh, OPEC yesterday. And then so all that's out and then we move back up. So there's a lot of stop loss action as it breaks out of consolidation. So that's what this is. That's why we watch pennants and we look where they are in the grid. So we're not even near eight days. We're not too far away on the five minute. But you can see what the potential is just on this move, right? But this is all about momentum. When we're this high, yes, it's powerful and all this news, but everyone knows it. So if you are long, be very tight. Um, vols high so you can do optionality and stuff like that too. I mean, a, a structure is what I mean. Against your call. Um, is Johnny in the house or is he hanging out with Zuckerberg? He didn't matter. Thought he might be. Um, so let's look. Uh, we looked at light crude. We looked at... I thought he um, was just here. I heard him a little while Yeah, ago. I heard him. I thought he popped in, but him and, him and Zuckerberg, they got that bright light thing going on. We're not sure what's going on there. Um, I am looking for his one. What are you saying? Oh, here he is. We're looking for you. We thought you were hanging out with your boy yeah, Zuckerberg. School of Marcus. You guys need me? My dog Buzz Bart, so I'm going to put it on mute. <laughs> okay. So here we have. Um, here we have uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I'm looking at a one hour and a weekly because we end on Bitcoin, and I'm looking at a daily. And a uh, hourly on Ethereum. So yesterday we had the whole wormhole deal with Solana. Right. Uh, with Ethereum, about $340 million. Just a lazy little amount. Right. Last I heard, they're negotiating, trying to get it back. So, the, the, so what we did see with that, and you can see it a little bit on these hourly, if you compare them. We, Ethereum got sold off more than Bitcoin, basically, on that move. And since then, after hours, so these things, they got trashed. As we said, these are pretty well just following NASDAQ futures. You can put them up against each other. They, this is a pure, become really just a speculative uh, measurement against those. So so that makes it a little bit easier, right? So if you miss one, very far, it's like a few seconds apart in jumping the other. Anyway, the relevance is, look how that has moved since the S&P um, and NASDAQ moved ahead with Amazon. So if you're trading these, keep an eye on that outside factor. Now what I look for is when all that uh, nexus breaks down, because this is your ultimate speculative uh, vehicle, you know, different cryptos. But So these are the two main ones that we actually watch. Um and if you look at weekly, you can see Ethereum, I mean, sorry, Bitcoin is playing with the bottom of the cloud over here. And Ethereum I have as a daily just because they're pretty much the same thing. And you can see this long selling action that's coming from back here in November. And so that's just the same pattern as here. Okay, so that's a technical overview. Um, you've got a lot of downside on there. If these break down from here then it and you can see it's um our view what all this is up here we've been through that on the site won't bore you too much with that so what's other than facebook taking it like a champion today um and the wormhole yesterday what else is going on in the meadowland johnny it's just you know business as usual it's uh <laughs> part of the evolutionary process and you know all things being equal you know a lot of people got taken out the knees in the equities markets where bitcoin it moved but not too much and as a matter of fact it's up a little bit it's up right now, now but yeah well it, it, it mirrored the nasdaq move pretty yeah. much so they they took a few of them out the 
out the woodshed. So, um, what, what what was that high there? Thirty nine thousand. I went down to thir- I lost three thousand and it's recovered one thousand. Yeah. So yeah, pretty well got shot. Yeah, it was. It's better than some of my positions that I have and <laughs> other portfolios. <laughs> uh, so why are you got to bring Kathy up? Well, actually, while we're at it, let's have a look at what Kathy did today. Uh, that's oil. Hang on, hang on. Where's out? So this will be on the. Uh, it's on the website. So this is tonight's wrap. Oil, natural gas, matter, and Amazon deliver volatility. That's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. So all the different closes on oil. Let's not boy. Uh, well, one interesting thing I did notice because we watched the Russell two thousand. So that fell 1.9%, which was better than the others as we're talking. NASDAQ was down 3.74%. But the Russell 3000 growth, so that's even more for the punters and dribblers, I think, Johnny. That fell Mm -hmm. 3.7%. So almost as much as the NASDAQ, but almost double of the Russell 2000. Uh, Anyway, so here's ARC. Here's how ARC did today. So it fell 5% today. Now, what I want you to look at, people, is this has been a steady uh, pullback. So if we look at what it did on two days ago. So if you remember, we started off with a bang. Um, They ran it up right at the end of the uh, month to help the 401ks, etc., whatever, you know, that buy-in period. So... RK actually jumped 6.4% that day. Or nine, sorry, 9%, $6.40. But since then, it's given all that back end some. In two days, it's fallen over 10%. That's a while. And now we go to ARCG up 8%. Then the next two days. So the ARCG is doing better. ARCG is the one that got whacked. And that's obviously the more technology one. So it didn't help. Getting PayPal and uh, um, Facebook back to back, yeah. I mean, yeah. like boom, boom. Um, it reminds me of that fight with old Shamrock. Anyway, um, <laughs> Arc X. What is Arc X? It's their space. Oh, that's space cadet. Okay, so that was up three percent on that day, and I've kept this for a reason so we could all see this. And so the next two days. Basically gave it all back. The worst, as you can see, is ARK. Okay. Then ARK yeah. F. That's the financial one, isn't it? Yes, that fintech. Yeah. So. So that's got a good old little, you know, some of those absolute gems like Coin and Hood. Real. Well, and they also have uh, the uh, Grayscale Bitcoin oh, Trust. Got, oh, okay. So they got some real, um, you know. Thank God, Kathy doesn't explosion. own racehorses. Should be taking them all out the back. Um, that's an old saying. Uh, anyway, 8% up. So what you do get when they bounce, they these are pretty big. The bounces were double of like every four pretty much. But when it pulls back after, and you'll notice this, so it has, and this is a simple LE. You don't even need to know the chart. So it bounces up. It's in a downtrend. And then the next day, the downtrend has gone for more than two days. Now, you can argue this is all because of Amazon or all because of Facebook or whatever it may be. Well, the difference is yesterday, remember, the stock market had a strong day. Remember, everything closed up. We sold, we went short at the top of it all. We didn't, we, we didn't sell a hole or anything. But all of uh, Kathy's stocks were down yesterday. Yeah. So it does have its own thing. But look at it. So this is actually the worst, the F. This is down uh, 12% in the last two days. And then the yeah, final... Yeah, so with your fintech is to go with the PayPal and what's happened with... Right, right. PayPal, Hood. That's what I meant, all those little gems. Um, yeah. And W, what's W? Arc W. It's our work... Uh, what is it? Um, hold on, I'll tell you that. Actually, it's not their internet. I think it's their W is. So that was down what eight and a half, up eight and a half that one day. Then it's given back eleven percent as well. 
Jeez, they just give it back, don't they? Yeah, next generation internet. That's next generation. Okay. No, that's uh, that, that's okay. W is the future of the internet. Oh, okay. Who's in that? Out of interest. Um, it's like looks like Gam, um, Google, Amazon. Meta. Oh, so Meta would have, yeah, they got lit up on Meta today. But if they got Amazon, that'll help it tomorrow. But they're all down on it today. So it actually didn't do too bad if you think that Facebook was down 26%. I think it also has Roblox skills. Oh, it's got the gaming stuff too. Yeah. So I see you got your assistant trader there in the background. Um, yeah. Sorry. So we got... Um, Here's another thing to take into account, and this probably explains this big move. There is that ETF that's a double short on it. I can't think of the name of it, but Badavi trades it. He did real good. He actually got all this move because he bought that up here, remember? It's a reverse, mm -hmm. kind of like cold is for natural gas was a real good one. Uh, if you had that overnight, uh, I didn't. But um, Anyway, so that exaggerates this move. It exaggerates a short covering. And no doubt when people jump on it, it exaggerates the downswing. So that's a lot of these, you know, people try to just put fundamentals. That's why we look at charts, we look at order flow. You can be the best thing in the world, but if everyone's in it and they're all one way and they're all going to get out, either way, short or long, you get these exaggerated moves. Um, as far as Europe went today, Europe was down everywhere. Um, Germany was the hardest hit. Uh, it closed, actually France, I just saw that at the end, sorry. France, but, uh, I know Germany closed near its lows, France too. The stocks was actually down more than all of them, which is interesting. I'm not sure how that's, uh, oh, it just seems unusual to me. I can't say I know enough about it. Um, so everywhere was down. That was a lot to do with, uh, you can blame, um, who's that hot prince from France, princess? Uh, Lagarde, Christine Lagarde. Talking about there's a chance of raising rates. Uh, I mean, if any of this happens, is another game. But anyway, that meant selling, and we saw the euro go up uh, to one times. We saw the pound go up. Germany, remember, massive exporting country. So even little things like that hurt the exports. Then you had the Bund's reaction. So that's basically what happened in Europe. Overnight, we still have the Lunar Festival going on, the Chinese New Year. So Hong Kong and China was closed again. I, I think they open up tomorrow. Um, South Korea opened back up yesterday. That had a, uh, was up 1.7%. So it was a bit of a catch-up because it was an open all week. Uh, and the Aussie fell down a little bit. Uh, remember, that's been a big gain with commodity prices. They had a bunch of numbers out there, uh, trade numbers, etc. Um so keep an eye on all that because they're good tells. Uh, and here we are in the bond market. So as I mentioned, we had the Bank of England, ECB, and those are all on the website. You can read all about them. Great reading. <laughs> uh, the, so what we saw as a result, we saw our yields move with the currency obviously affecting the forward margins uh, for those from the FX world. So you had the two-year, which again is the, what's the two-year again? It's the Fed funds, basically, right? So that rose four basis points up to 119. The 10-year, which is the benchmark, rose six basis points up to 183. Um, and now the big thing, as far as we talk bonds, so the gilt, which is what, so the Bund is the German 10-year, and the gilt is what you call the UK 10 year. So the guilt on that rise rose to a three year high. What I don't get is they all knew they were going to rise, right? Raise. It was, it had to rise. The question was a quarter or a half. So in America, we kind of run it ahead. It's different, these different markets, different countries. You notice that little thing? So the, the 10 year or Bund over in Germany actually rose to a two and three quarter high too. Uh, and there you got your curve. Um, bunch of news out today. Uh, there's Amazon's number if you want to go through them real quick. 
Their earnings per share at 27.75, massive beat of 3.65 was what's expected. You know what I get out of that, Johnny? The anal analysis, the analysts, the an an analysts are next to bloody useless. How can you miss by that much if you're doing your job, right? Revenue was slightly down, but that's a massive beat. Uh, and, and obviously they, they did much better on the, sorry, the supply crisis. So that's a positive thing. Uh, one thing, uh, and it's been interesting. So Netflix did this. And this is obviously a part of inflation on one hand, but it's also a captive audience. So Amazon's going to increase their prime membership to one thirty nine a year. So I think that's like nine ninety nine to 12 I really, I mean, most of us have it probably, right? Um, and they jumped and yet they lowered their guidance. So it's an interesting thing. But this is the other thing the market liked. So AWS, which is just, that's what made Amazon really. So they moved up 40% versus a 35%. So remember there's been a lot of sub, um, subjecture that uh, they're going to lose out to Google and uh, who's it? Google, Microsoft, Oracle, etc., Apple, or the cloud. Well, they just seem to be doing just fine. Um, and there was some negative chatter that because people are going back to work. I mean, they obviously rose above it. We all know the price up five hundred bucks. Um, there was rumours before it that they were going to do a split. Uh, and, and so a lot of these are just put out there by hedge funds, tied in with mainstream media and all that. So be careful. Obviously it didn't happen, but that's a thought that's out there. Um, it, it didn't happen. Uh, we had the ISM uh, services out today. They were slightly less, 59.9 versus 60. The job claims came back in, which means all those people that went on the dole for a couple of weeks because of Omicron, it looks like they're all going back to work. Um, and here's the labour productivity we talked about to more, to, uh, earlier, uh, and factory orders, etc. cetera, are out. Uh, we, the, all the other numbers, we wouldn't go, go through them, all the ISMs for Europe, Asia, Oceania, Australia, they're all on there. Okay, um, tomorrow's big deal. I think we went through every chart, didn't we? Uh, tomorrow's big deal, obviously, is the non-farm payrolls. Uh, AFP, ADP, sorry, was a big miss. Uh, often that is unrelated to NFP because it's one's government, one's private. There's a whole reporting thing. Um, so, again, watch for the earnings. Um, if they're way too inflationary, how they'll react. So what's your interest rates, uh, etc. Well, that's all from me. Anything else from anyone? Nope. No. It sounds like you pretty oh, much you rolled it all out. I yeah, think we've kind of the, covered uh, everything, haven't we? The metaverse is crushed right now. It's going to probably fill well, a little bit yeah, of that. Yeah, your fearless leader didn't really oh. represent the code too good, did he? got he? the ISIS guys, Wolfley. But, oh, yeah, in the geopolitical yeah. world, uh, yeah. So, um, there were 13 people killed, and according to this, there was uh, four children and six women. They, that was a really hit job. Yeah, and I'm sure that's something. So I've heard, it's interesting, The what I saw initially the U.S. Uh, comment was that this guy blew himself up. And uh, whether that's then... Well, then one minute it's military precision, then it's blowing himself up, and obviously the collateral damage, isn't that a terrible word, of all these kids and women getting blown up, right? So, but so, so, as we know, most of us, ISIS was basically, we don't want to get too much into it. Basically, it was a, a U.S. creation to, to fight terrorism, and it kind of went awry. So you'll hear it. Uh, who was the uh, McCain and... Um, uh, I, I thought back then, the, the ISIS leader. Yeah, I yeah, thought. but it was back when all that was McCain and Obama, right? That was yeah, that and era. Was, and, 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, and so what happened was, uh, so a lot of these people, like, you saw the same thing with the IRA and stuff like that. So a lot of these are just basically criminals. You arm them. What do you think's going to happen? And then it becomes just denial, denial, denial. But it's all out there. But what's the interesting thing, they seem to always happen at opportune moments. So this bloke gets whacked overnight, however it happened. Lo and behold... We have Nancy Pelosi going on about uh, Russia's going to attack and this. and So, I, you know, as I said, I've got ears on the ground over there. Um, and a lot of people are very unhappy because it was everyone was just kind of getting along. Um, it's been, this has been going a long time. Basically, there's been a little bit of a civil, it's not even really a civil war, but you have um, Ukraine split between uh, basically Russian descent, Ukrainian descent, and it's basically along the um, orthodox lines of Ukraine versus Russia church, basically what it is. Um, that's it. Uh, and as far as they're concerned, it's winner. <laughs> and and so just think how, how this, just, just imagine if you're there, Madhavi. So you're there, it's freezing cold, right? Um, you've had the same ESG, it's not just all ESG, but we'll just call that for now, but you've had infrastructure problem, you had um, all this stuff going on, so there isn't as much gas to supply as need be, right? A lot of rushes because of the OPEC pulling back, but whatever, because it's all related, remember a lot of the gas comes from, from that as well. Um, anyway, next minute you've got the US constantly posturing, basically wanting a war. They're trying to will it a war. That's why the whole distraction bit comes on. Um, so anyway, the, the bottom line is don't think for a minute that everyone's happy over there. I'm talking all sides, right? So, And that's from people there on the side, different, different breeds. So keep that in mind. Um, I mean, they sent the big amount of reinforcement to kill I oh, the US you mean? <laughs> yeah, they sent 3000 troops over. So there's um another uh, one one third and it may be not too far off it because one of the problems the US has in particular is that we sent so many troops like multiple campaigns you're only meant to have a few to one of the to um, the Middle East, right? What? How long did that go on, Madhavi? Afghanistan, Iraq, and all that. Oh, Afghanistan was twenty years. For so twenty you know, years, right? So, it, the thing is, so much money gets wasted. Well, it's yeah, but it's not just the money. I'm, so, uh, what I was getting to is more the people, the soldiers, and we we know a few of them between yeah. us, and oh. they're messed up, unfortunately. You you you're messing up your young population. You're sending them to wars that they can't win. <laughs> they, they always end up losing and backing out at the end of it. But what's the point of it? So you got to look at it. Is oh, it, we haven't uh, had that lesson about the industrial military the, industrial, the, industrial the, complex. The, the <laughs> stuff. So I mean, just it, it is taking an impact. Look at the debt on this country. Look at all these. I know a lot of my friends who are involved in militaries and stuff. They all come back all screwed up. Poor guys. Yeah, that's and the point I'm more getting at. Is is that psychological damage? The human toll damage of it and and not only here but those countries that they invaded they turn them into lawless countries they don't make them better everything gets worse you know and then the, the next thing you know there's a terrorist there that or some some guy who's a got the education of a two-year-old ruling the country and they ask why is he there well it's because what she has done to that region well so I mean, that's a good point that a lot of people forget. I mean, don't forget, they just don't think for themselves. That's what drives me nuts with this whole politics and and particularly in the US, this, this cancel, this cancel that. Open your bloody eyes and care about someone other than yourselves. Because just think how many people died in these countries. Not just English, Australian, American or whatever else was there. I mean, just untold. So you've seen... But what these guys see all this that are... I'm talking about American soldiers. So they get messed up. So there's a lot of the theories that... 
These, like, for example, these soldiers they send away are, are people that just can't cope coming back to a normal society, for want of a better word. It's not really that normal anymore, is it? A funny story I heard today, mate. They're yeah. talking about the Russians going to do this propaganda film, right? Put it out that Ukraine did attack these people, killing them. But isn't that what the U.S. did in Iraq? Put that propaganda film that was, that was filmed in the U.S. studio. Which you one? Know? <laughs> no, I'm being sarcastic. There was a few of them, yeah. The first one. The first one, they did, a, they did one in, in L.A., a fake broadcast, and they put it out like, the, the oh, they're killing the children. It was the ambassador's kid that was on the film. You know, they just shot it in Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of that. and I mean, it's like War of the Worlds, that movie from 70 years ago, whatever it was. Oh, that's kind of funny. You're, you're talking about Ukraine. You remember how they're all over news now saying the Russians are going to do a false bag or video on it? I'm like, is that what you guys did? Yeah, I mean, so the bottom line is it's all political theatre and the man in the street, like us, the voter, the dribblers, um, there's no no thought to it. But we kind of got it. The main reason I was mentioning, of course, we're talking about currencies and oil and, and stuff. And it's what... And it's not unrelated because we're talking about lives and lies and all this sort of thing, right? This is affecting this one action from this 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 presidency is affecting the United States people and all the people in these regions. We're in a massive energy crisis because of a multitude of things: Omicron, supply. Uh, Real, the trans, whole transition wasn't even thought out. It was just jump on a bandwagon to feel good. I mean, it's just unbelievable, really. I mean, in 20 years, 50 years, whenever they write all this history, they're just going to go, what the heck? And we, we haven't even touched on the whole mismanagement of Omnicrom. Well, we're calling it Omnicrom now, but COVID. I mean, so there's a multitude of things. So knowing all that, that's the interesting thing was I just, I keep thinking... I got to keep an upside on the market just because the market might be short because it's so bad. Does that make any and, sense? <laughs> what the economy would be if all that money wasn't wasted and and, and kept growing. I mean, we would be so self dependent from anything we ever wanted. Well, well, you're missing the point. It cost us money, but a lot of people made money from it, and that's the yeah. disgraceful thing. I mean, that I, whole I military uh, industrial yeah, complex. But I call that stuff. It's basically stealing, you know. It is. It is stealing, mate. It's just stealing. But that that money, the taxpayers' money, or the borrowing your from your great great grandkids' money, if it would have went to developing this country and put in all the infrastructure. Well, well how, about how about this? How about this? Instead of destroying other countries of nation building, all that money goes to helping those countries. Good infrastructure, good health care, whatever, right? That would be a lot better. Well, you know what? I guess they repaid the farmer people back that would have made the money there by the virus, the uh, vaccination. Oh, I'm only joking, of course. Every American citizen to have free health care, free mm -hmm. education, everything will all be paid for, and and we still have... And, oh, and 100%. Million. Very good points. Because our tax rates, our GDP would be high. I mean, it's... I mean, yeah, it would be a different world. But, and so a lot of it's con contrived, uh, obviously, to control fear and greed and money. We're seeing it all. We're, like, it's, we're kind of living a lot of these books that we grew up with in high school. I know school. a strong military. You've got to have a strong military, that's for sure, but you don't need this much. Well, you don't need to just to uh, the nation it's, building. It's theft. So, so I got these contractors in the military, right? A bolt that the guy could go out there and buy for like two cents to 20 cents. Right, they sell it to the military for two bucks. Right, well, the same thing happens in in hospitals. Yeah, it's you all know in the U. Yeah, I mean I that's a society. It's a kickback society. You look it's disgusting. Other countries, the amount of how much it costs them build one muscle, one missile compared to the U.S. It's like man. Oh, I, I bet it goes on in all these countries. That sort of thing. It's no, human. No, yeah, it's here it's next country. level. Yeah. No, well, let's no, get back on on because uh, we could. Speak Talk about that all day. One thing I wanted to point out, particularly to the Aussie and English uh, viewers, is that BHP, as you know, is 
going all back 100 percent australian uh they're not going to be listed in england anymore uh multiple reasons obviously well it could just be they don't like boris but actually there's more to it but the reason i got sent a message that bhp is one of the heaviest shorted 17.6 percent of that stock is shorted but they have to Flip, they got to convert the BHPLN, i.e. the one that's on the London Exchange, needs to be converted with the arbitrage unwinds to the uh, one that goes on the ASX. So just keep an eye on that. If you trade commodities, you will be, you'll know about Rio, Tino and BHP, the two biggest commodity companies in the world. So, oh, yeah. Um, and one last thing I got to say. Yep, yep. Remember the, the U.S. taxes, they were only implemented because it was a wartime tax. I guess we've been in the war ever since the tax was implemented. You know, there's a, there, I do remember something on that. So that was why it was a big deal. If we go back to when little George was in, George W., uh, they, they made a big effort of, make, of calling it a war on terrorism. And that was part, that was part of it. One of it was to... It's a psyop in the sense of making us all believe it. But another bit was that, so it could be funded for... Isn't that just... It's just so wrong. It kind of grinds my gears as we talk about it. Before that, there was no tax in the United States. There was no tax. So then it went to like 90%. Yeah. That's it's another a, crazy thing. Just, uh, just imagine how much more income people could have. Yeah, I mean... But it's... I mean, yeah. There's a couple of things to think about. I'm throwing out there. You guys research it and let us know if, if any of it's in, that you guys don't find something different. Yeah, you know, you know, I'd be surprised, mate, if people are okay with it all, to be honest, you know. Because... Yeah, but this a, all affects the stock market. And the oh, it affects things. everything. So that's why we talk about it. The, the, the stock market is not just what it is. It's all around what's Yeah, happening. it's all these interacting. Remember, the biggest thing's mental and psychology. So that's why we're spending a bit of time. We thought it was a really good in, uh, opportunity. We're talking about the whole war, Ukraine thing, the Middle East wars, how that all shapes the mindset. And that mindset becomes a herd. And most of the people that are they're getting their news from mainstream media or internet, all these things. And so everything's tainted and taunted um and that's where you also get these really violent moves in in uh stocks and uh, because people get the one way i mean we're pretty contrarian but you don't want to be contrarian for the sake of it either that's why we use the murray and everything else so maybe may was born in a different country so was i so that's why we get a little bit more of a different perspective than someone else might have been here the whole life Right, we're, and yeah, we're, and don't don't think we're saying uh, we're right and you're wrong. Biased. Everyone's a bit no, different. No, no, no. So we'll have biases, obviously, uh, from where we're from and upbringing. Everyone's like that. So, but right now, as, as far as markets go, that bias is is in things. I mean, and actually, as an oil trader, that's my main thing for a long time. Um, you see it so big there. This whole. ESG, any fossil fuels kind of new, obviously, because, you know, they should have been, if they really, well, that's another thing about corruption. If they were genuine about this, it would have just become a bloody political thing three years ago or five years, whenever. It's all convenience, right? Um, anyway, the, the oil and gold are the two classic things that are moved by herd mentality, fear, mass psychology. It's these price movements speculation moves them at least 20 to 30 percent away from a fundamental basis so keep that in mind and that's why you get these big oh why is it falling why is it going you saw that in natty in the last two days so anything that's really hot become attracts the gambling element but then the herd element stock market is the biggest of it though probably right also the world has changed now we're moved on to like a different phase you know how we go through calmness and you go through chaos and he goes so th it's all cycles when was it calm i don't remember it being calm well it's been, it's been <laughs> relatively calm and then the last <laughs> while you know some, yeah, you know, yeah yeah i'm just feeling go through more of a gyration time uh what they call it and, and they go throughout history look at it there's 
there's periods of calm, there's periods of chaos, and there's periods of transition. I think we're transitioning to a different stage. I don't know what that's going to be like, but you can only imagine. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, life goes on and it keeps cycling. So a lot of these things, here's what the, it's all a, it's like a series of sound bites now. So what we're talking about now, they weren't even talking about a month ago. And the next month will be something else. So governments, and I mean all governments, pretty much, and news outlets and big corporates, so much of it is about moving the, the perception. Look, Facebook, that whole thing, metaverse, is all about that. This is a guy changing the bloody narrative. Absolutely. I mean, he renamed it. They go to him last night. Oh, so how's the meta? Oh, are we still working on it? What the heck, dude? You change your name to it. You said you're brand new to it. It's just all BS, right? So it's it's right across. I mean, I mean, I don't. It, what I'm saying is the 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 perception bit. We all know it. It's basically just digital. Digital's been so. But what he's done is his story. When you lie enough, mate, you got to remember your lies, right? Oh, so, <laughs> just keep track when you go up today, right? Mark down how many times you start hearing COVID. I mean, it started getting less and less every day. Now you're hearing more meta, meta, you know? It's meta, meta in it's Ukraine, COVID, Ukraine, Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, you, Ukraine and stuff. It's, it's the next thing. But it, every, before it was every second COVID, 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 COVID. But now it's getting less and less, less. Because I check it every time and I see it's getting less and less. And keep and say if you want to, if you don't think we're being manipulated, what we think there's more people dying from COVID in the United States and have it than any other time per day, right? That's crazy, but and no, but you don't hear that, right? So it's, it's no, an inconvenient no, truth. Everybody got boosted. That's why. Yeah, well, they can snap back with that. I saw Amazon got boosted. So did Snap. <laughs> but anyway, people, good luck tomorrow. Be tight. I wouldn't go in. I personally, I don't advise going in those numbers. I watch the reaction. You got plenty of time. You got a whole day. You don't have to be in the trade. See how the market reacts to the jobs, right? Uh, but by the market, I mean look at the bonds, look at the currencies, look at the spurs. And then you'll get a, then there'll be a pattern through the day, right? Uh, I didn't look who's reporting tomorrow. It's on the website, but um, psychology is everything in this market. Yeah, because now they're changing the narrative to a more of a bearish stance. So and and that's going to affect people hearing that every day. That's going to put that psychology on them. So they're going to be more up to sell than before, where everybody's talking about, hey, the stock's going to a billion. Oh, yeah, yeah, now it's sell the rip instead of buy the dip. You know, so that perception is going to be out there, and that's going to affect the markets. But in that. saying that, look how it just ran four days straight too, and look at Amazon after. So you've got still, but it is, in in fact, I actually think Powell knows what he's doing. I know a lot don't, but they've tried. They, they've been wary of this stock market for a long time. Um, just because whatever goes up, it's got to come down kind of mentality. So that, this was a good way of easing it down. Like the crap stocks have just, the trash has really been wrecked, right? Hey, hey talk to me after two Fed hikes. Then, then we'll see how easy it gets. Oh, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying what he's doing is, well, dude, you did, put yourself in his shoes. You've got a U.S. administration... That couldn't, don't know where they're coming or going. That's coming off a previous uh, administration where, if you remember, old Donny used to threaten Powell every other day. They did a little bit of back with this lot. He's got that. He's got all this debt. Uh, you've got incompetent at best. Just look at the energy and all this. And then you, you got they're trying to politicise the Fed. Look at the three that are going up there. Um, it's not an easy job, but it's an easy person to blame. So, so, so this is what I think is going through the Fed's mind to me. He's like, holy, you know, before we used to do the boom and ban, right? But if we do the boom, <laughs> like shoot it down again, we don't have very weapons to bring it back. Oh, right? that's because another thing I agree with that. He needs to like the... So, so I figure out how we can slowly and gently put this down, not too fast, you know, but if, because if it gets too fast, how are we going to bring it up when there's no very few bullets left? 
Right, right. He tried to put a couple of bullets back in the chamber before before that happens. So well, that's the biggest problem. That, that That's why he's so worried about adjusting things, and that's just been his biggest fear. Well, actually, another thing I'd add to that is, as we said, our big things, um, psychology, we're going to steer this pod channel more towards that, uh, getting people on with that respect. And he he had a battle where they wanted him out, right? The whole, it became a left-right thing, which is crazy. It's meant to be independent. So he had to get the respect of at least the middle of politics, right? Um, and so did Brainard. So he had to show that he was t- being tough or understanding that inflation was out of control. He had to do that for a start. But Spoos just fell uh, seven handles while I'm watching. Um, so he had that. He had to change the psychology of to because they became a bit of a joke, right? You had those those Fed guys that sold all those stocks. That was convenient, wasn't it? Right at the top. Um, so you had that situation. So it was really a lot of issues there, and it's easy to politicize it. You look at people like that, Elizabeth Warren. I mean, just mindless stuff. But people, there's enough people believe it, and then you got. So then you got, you know, um, God, I remember when Donnie was in, he put up that woman who was just wanted her on the Fed. So it's all over the place, but none of this stuff should be politicised because you want it to be independent, as best you can, of a private bank, which is basically what it is, right? So um, I don't know what the news is there. I did The only news I see from about an hour ago, South Korea's uh, inflation went up, and you can guess, yes, it beat expectations. So 0.6% versus 04 that came out while we were talking. Um, so keep an eye on that. Also remember, if you are an options trader, watch your vol tomorrow, watch your tater and your vega. Um, you're going to gain, you got a weekend coming up. Um, and as far as, Weather watches for natural gas, etc. There is freezing cold uh, in Houston. The relevance is Henry Hub is this area, right? So keep an eye on that. Uh, if it becomes like last time, it actually becomes a destruction event, um, demand destruction. That's about anything else, mate. Good talk on, and I hope you enjoyed it. We try to cover different things. It's not bloody finance and. Stuff would kind of make what we look at, and it's pretty well what we talk. We talk with big guys, what you would call big guys, you know, hedge fund managers, uh, bankers, all the time. That's our background. So we try to share that, right? Um, and this is our, our opinion, not anybody else's. So yeah, yeah. Think, you know, it's a God, word of God. That's just what our thoughts are. So Yeah, yeah, and exactly that's what we're sharing. And so... Half of it's probably bullshit, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but on a serious note, so a lot of that stuff comes back and it can be confusing. And it's a hard thing in the currency trading bit of me and the oil trading is you got to take in what... So what you hear in the international sphere could be totally wrong, but it's how people react to it. it I'm trading purely as a trader. Remember, we're not talking as a moralistic or any of that sort of thing, humanitarian. That's obviously the most important thing, but that's not going to help as a trader. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Johnny and Madhavi, and G yeah, no, for being well behaved. That's a lot. Always be killing it. Exactly. Always be killing it. What's those job numbers? Um, say uh, nice things about the cold weather. Us Texans that can't handle the cold, you know that. Oh, man. Sweet, man. Yeah, yeah, got the heater blowing. We got well, the. If you want, you can come out, come out here, hang out with the homeless. <laughs> well, here's some good news. The freeze last year actually, I had to replace my whole um, HVAC, so we got brand new, powerful heaters, and they're getting a blast. So I got that going for me. Well, good luck to you, man. <laughs> hey, yeah. guys. Thanks for joining. Remember, like, subscribe, share it, hit all those like buttons. See if we can get us up there. See you guys. Good luck.